Hey, everybody. We are back here with another Freaky Friday guest story, and we are so excited today to be joined by Molly Lambert, who is the creator of the podcast Heidi World, as well as a writer and working on some other brilliant things. We are so excited to have you here, Molly. Hi, thanks for having me. Thanks so much for being here. Of course. So for those who don't know you, what uh, what are you up to? What's Heidi World all about? And what is kind of your descriptor of yourself in this world? And we're always like, we're entertainers, creators, storytellers. <laughs> so how do you define it? Yeah, I'm a, I'm a, a podcast, uh, a podcast twos. Um, uh, Heidi World is a narrative nonfiction podcast about Heidi Fleiss, who was a Hollywood madam in the 90s, in the early 90s, uh, who basically sold sex to everybody in Los Angeles, uh, every rich person, and mm-hmm. sold it to people at, the, at a bunch of movie studios and then went to trial, basically. And the, question, the big question, the big scandal was, did people from the movie studios use movie studio money to pay for escorts for parties? Mm-hmm. And the answer is almost definitely yes. But yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Unsurprisingly. <laughs> at the time, though, it was very, oh, Heidi Fleiss is a madam. She's like, I remember yeah. I was little. I was probably seven when it came Mm -hmm. out and to be seven years old and to remember like oh that's a bad woman like I just remember that and then you grow up and go she wasn't doing anything that most of us yeah that's like like, (laughs) nowadays that's like why I made the podcast is because I was always really obsessed with the story because that was the first time I ever was ever like well why why is it illegal to sell sex like yeah mm -hmm. here in Hollywood California like sex is used to sell everything so like Mm -hmm. Why can't a person sell sex? And also just the way in which like she was railroaded and yeah, the uh, clients were all got off free, scot free. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. She was painted as a villain and yeah. vilified and slut shamed, and then Charlie Sheen is just like cool guy, a cool guy who got to sleep with a lot of women. Yeah, he gets a million chances. So, so it's about all yeah. that stuff. Yeah. And then I just learned a lot about she's a really fascinating person and she's this mm-hmm. uh, Jewish girl from L.A. and her father was mm-hmm. kind of a doctor to the stars. Um, so it's also That's just right. a lot about L.A. history and kind of the way history gets erased in L.A. Uh, mm-hmm. and and how to mm-hmm. kind of dig under the, the new development to find all this stuff. Because, you know, L- I, I just love L.A. history. Um, yeah. And that comes through on the show, too. It's like a love letter to L.A., too. Even though it's like a flawed place. I mean, we're from Dallas. And before we start, got on the air, we talked about we, we've we uh, made our mark as Dallas. But when you really love the place you're from, it comes through. And that comes through as like, this is our city, man. And, you know, talking about L.A. is kind of the true hub of America. Mm-hmm. Yeah, totally. Despite it should be the capital, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think I think the capital should be Vegas. <laughs> Um, oh, yeah. the battle factor, Honestly. that's, yeah. So I've got another, another podcast coming up eventually that'll involves Vegas is, is what I'll say Ooh, about nice. it. Nice. Um, little teaser. I like that. But yeah, I, I love all the big themes, hypocrisy and money and sex mm-hmm. and everything. Especially yeah, you were saying, you know, just reading interviews with you, just given the climate we're in now where everybody is scrounging and saving and figuring out ways to make money and people have monetized their body with things like OnlyFans. And you brought up a good point when your interviews, just talking about how, well, if it's on Facebook, as long as you're like, kind of exposed but not too exposed Mm -hmm. it's fine but as soon as you go but click this button for to pay and see more yeah suddenly everyone's like what a monster it's very like Mm -hmm. like america's attitudes towards sex are very strange and Mm -hmm. especially with that because yeah it's like sex is used to help to sell everything it's the basis of advertising Uh so this kind of double double standards of who can sell sex and what kind of sex can you sell and you know yeah what's acceptable and, and what's what's not um and it usually comes no. down to like who makes the profit off of it so yeah right if it's the company making the profit it's so totally fine for the woman to be exposed but if it's the woman making the profit she's literally quite literally used pejorative terms a whore a slut whatever you to get slut shamed mm-hmm. yeah exactly yeah, there's so there's a ton of influencers that I mean, they're pushing their like lingerie lines or bikini lines or whatever and they don't get they, because they're not like on Oli fans, they're not getting dragged. Dragged, yeah, but it, it, it's and, the same concept. And it's because OnlyFans is like, you know, has a 
bank connected to them. And, and it's, mm-hmm. it's all just like, you know, it's the corporate, the corporate interest in, in selling sex versus kind of your, your grassroots sex selling. Um, yes, right? yeah. And yeah, Heidi Fleiss, Heidi Fleiss, a very like flawed person, not a, not a perfect hero by any means, but like a really interesting person. And that's what I like is, is female antiheroes. Um, but yeah, I had right. a, I had some chat podcast before that. I was on a show called mm-hmm. Night Call that was very, very kind of in Creepy. the same ballpark as a Sinisterhood. So I'm very excited mm-hmm. to Love talk it. to y'all today. About yeah. Yeah. Yes. We can't wait to hear your Freaky Friday story. Okay, yeah. yeah. You, say you got a good story. So uh, whenever you're ready, we'll jump right in. Okay. Well, I'll just tell you. So this happened last night, actually. Oh, wow. And... Basically, I was in the neighborhood of Los Feliz, which is kind of a spooky neighborhood in Mm -hmm. L.A. anyway. It's a lot of like Art Deco stuff. This is like where Heidi Fleiss was from, actually. Um, That's right. Her father's office is like now a taco place called Tacos to Madre. (laughs) Um, Wow. (laughs) So it's it's got – it's like sort of – a place where a lot of like movie star, early movie stars lived. Um, It's very just spooky. And so last night it was like – especially spooky it was it was really strange it was like the weather's been really strange in LA lately it's like rained a lot this year which is Mm -hmm. great so last night it was like kind of kind of a nice day just like a regular warm day and then like as the sun was setting there was like this beautiful sunset and then this gigantic cloud rolled in it was like Truly like a fog, you know, people say like fog rolls in. It was like genuinely mm-hmm. the fog like rolled in, rolled in with all oh. its fog friends and <laughs> just completely covered the whole sky. It was like I was driving from my house to dinner and I saw, you know, I was just like, oh, this is kind of oh. spooky. It's like, mm-hmm. you can Unusual. see it. A dark and like, stormy night. And because it's LA, I was also like, is there a fire? Like, is this... Yeah, oh, is this, be smoke. I <laughs> yeah. thought it was smoke at first. It looked kind of like smoke. So it was like truly like all of a sudden it goes from being this like bright, sunny, kind of beautiful day to, you know, the sun sets and it's like this this film noir like fog rolls in. Kind of uh-huh. like, you know, yeah. San Francisco type yeah. spooky fog, spooky fog. And it also makes you realize that's more why northern California. Yeah. Yeah. It, like makes you be like, oh, that's why there's fog in horror movies, is because fog is scary. <laughs> Yeah, you know? hell, there's a whole movie about that, right? <laughs> right? The it's fog, like an, yeah. Right? It's, it's like an inverted thing where you're like, like when I see fog, I feel I th- associate it with horror movies. I'm like, oh, it's yeah. like, it's like mm-hmm. John Carpenter's The Fog or whatever. But then it's mm-hmm. like made me be like, oh, that's why there's fog in horror movies. It's just fog. <laughs> It's fog creepy. Just, yeah, it's creep, yeah it, it obscures things. I'm expecting things. like the the radio in your car to just start playing like organ music. <laughs> and and the sky turns black and it's just like a weird violin all of a sudden. <laughs> so it was all right. So it was like that. And I don't know if you guys are familiar with the Griffith Observatory. It's like a observatory here in the hills. It's kind of a famous landmark in Los Angeles. Mm-hmm. Yes. As famous as the X where JFK was killed is for yes, you guys. Yes. The, <laughs> Yeah. One, of the, Fun one of the main things Dallas. people put it's the Hollywood sign is you know yeah, yeah, yeah. Sadly. <laughs> American presidents getting killed in a motorcade. Um, it was all us. Do they put an X where they think the shooter was, or just where JFK was killed? Uh, they put in if you visit Dallas and you drive down the street in front of the Texas School Book Depository, there's a, an X on the actual ground where they think the car was when the, the shot street. hit. Mm-hmm. So, and then in the school book depository in the building, the corner is closed off, and you can't go over there probably because they don't want you to see that it would be an impossible shot. But... <laughs> they, they do have it they set have up it, like, with like, um, like boxes. they say that it would have been w- to take a shot from it. Yeah, like he stacked up the school yeah. bo- books and the boxes and leaned on the yeah. So it's all it's all closed off. So wow. yeah, y'all have the Griffith Observatory. We have the school book depository. But the oh, six to what is it? The Sixth Floor Museum? Sixth Floor Museum is a really good museum. Oh, it's yeah. fantastic. Yeah. yeah, the whole museum's cool. But What's the Sixth Floor Museum? Yeah, is that in the book department? It's all JFK. Yeah, yeah. so that's where the, he was on the sixth floor. Oswald was on the sixth floor at the time. And then now they've built it out with like the Desapruder film. They have every single like. So if you're a JFK oh. enthusiast or interested in that, 
yeah, the sixth floor museum is incredible. Mm-hmm. So just, I mean, it's immersive. It's yeah, it's, 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 it's dark. It's dark. <laughs> it's but also the grassy knoll. I mean, there's always a bunch of stuff going on there's down there. We were just talking about this. There's, colorful characters. Yeah. Fun oh, people. Yes. Do yeah. kids like uh, smoke weed or is it like weirdos? Oh, yeah. Oh, Everybody yeah. smokes weed down there. Yeah. yeah. In fact, one time Tommy and I were like just at lunch around there. And then we were walking back to our car and we came upon this huge um, – like pro cannabis rally on the grassy knoll. No, no better place to promote grass than the grassy knoll. <laughs> yeah. and, and there were people like on megaphones, it. and I was like, "Wow, this is I real. have." And this was years ago, like when it. I mean, weed still is not legal in Texas, but it like was even more criminalized like more, then, and more like people are prudish, more prudish. Yeah, 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 yeah. But um, yeah, so yeah, there's always something going on down like, there. I'm scared of Texas cops. <laughs> yeah. Not in Dallas, you can are. be scared of t- Texas cops, <laughs> but in Dallas, it's like not. And Austin, both their cops like won't. Yeah, yeah, Dallas and Austin honest. are blue. Yeah. Well, they don't care. Yeah, that's good. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's having good DAs being like, "Don't bring me these kids." <laughs> that's <laughs> meaningless. Good to know because yeah. I smoke a lot of weed. So when I go to Texas and I'm smoking weed on the extra JFK was killed, I, it's good to know I don't have to <laughs> be paranoid about. Yeah. It. Make yeah, sure you that. get a picture. As long as just, you don't have like a rolling suitcase full of like bricks of marijuana. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, care yeah. About I just have to be paranoid yeah. about the government lying to us about. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah. for sure. Yeah, you will be paranoid if you're smoking weed on the grassy knoll. You're paranoid because you're like, what if they not told us? Yeah, is... what else do we not know? So speaking of that, <laughs> I bet. the yeah. Griffith Observatory is uh, a telescope and a and a you know observatory and planetarium. Um. But it's not a real telescope. So first of all, Griffith Park, super haunted. Griffith Park, uh, this is like where I was driving to. It's right by the observatory. And I noticed that the observatory looked extra spooky because it was like of the fog. And there was like a just the lights had just come on. And so it just mm. looked spooky. It, I took some, I was trying to mm-hmm. take some pictures of it, but I like really couldn't capture it. But it was like completely foggy and then these like dim lights come on on the observatory which is on the hillside and kind of and it kind of looks like a ufo or something it's just like it's just glowing from the side yeah it's like a glowing weird thing on the hillside um so then so yeah so griffith park is haunted griffith j griffith the guy who it's named after who's a rich guy who donated his name is griffith griffith yeah i believe so griffith Griffith, j griffith Griffith, i believe griffith oh no (laughs) so you already know it's weird he murdered yeah. his wife. He murdered his wife. Wow. Um, I think, pretty sure, or he tried to at least. Um, mm, not a good dude. But you know, you know how rich people in olden times used to like give the city things so they wouldn't be like murdered by a mob. Yeah, yeah. they wouldn't get in trouble. Yeah. Angry regular people. So the observatory, the idea was like it's not. It, it's too bright in Los Angeles to do any star stuff really from. Mm. The Griffith Park Observatory, all the real star stuff happens out at the Mount Wilson Observatory, which is like out in the middle of nowhere up a hill. <laughs> yeah. It was incredible. I'm only just now realizing how very bright Los Angeles is yeah. to have an observatory right there in the side I of it. I just learned this because it's like I went and did the tour one time and they talk, they say that. They're like, this was, this was, wow. a rich guy was like, Hey, observatories are cool. Regular people should get to like see what they are like and see a big telescope. But it's basically like a show telescope. It's like it's not for oh, no. It's not for scientists. There's like a bunch of real observatories in in the LA area, but Griffith Park is like for tourists, which is cool. Also, it's Fuck. like it's, it's it's been in movies and stuff too. Yeah, so it's, like, Rebel it's like a Rebel Without a Cause. I mean, it is yeah. truly like a it's a super spooky Art Deco building. It's really it's like a weird marble kind of mausoleum looking thing. It's very cool. Um, and yeah. you can walk up to it, and it's free. It's one of the best things in LA, actually. Recommend. Nice. Um, That's badass. We gotta go. Instead of an X where JFK was killed, there's like a really bad, scary bust of James Dean. Because of Rebel Without a Cause. <laughs> nice. I love a bad sculpture. Oh I love God. beautiful, great sculptures, but like the Christian Ronaldo sculpture when someone tried to make that brass <laughs> sculpture. And just, I love a der- the I Love Lucy sculpture, like a deranged sculpture of a famous person. Keep that my thought things. about the Cristiano Ronaldo sculpture because it'll come back okay. later. Um, Thank it. Okay. So, so yeah. So I went to dinner with my friends. And then when I came out, I was like, 
I'm going to drive into the park at night to get a picture of how spooky the observatory looks right now. Um, the start of any good story of like, yeah. let me just go closer to the scary thing. And that's also just like how I am is I'm like, I'm a private investigator who's not being hired to do anything and just. Yeah, I'm investigating for me. Yeah. Just Self-proclaimed sees, private investigator. Yeah. Self-employed. Just like, yeah, oh, I see something and I want to go look at it. And I do a lot of that mm-hmm. in LA because that's a super fun thing to do in LA is to be like, what is that? Mm-hmm. I will find out. Um, let me see awesome. if I can get closer to this weird thing. So... I drive into the park, I'm by myself, and as I start driving into the park, I can see that the light around the observatory is now bright blue, and there's just, like, blue light coming, like, you can see it from far away, that now Mm. instead of just being, like, spookily lit, it's like there's this bright blue light in the sky over the observatory, and it looks... So spooky. It looks, you know, alien. Like a it's not supposed to be spacecraft there. is about to descend from the sky. Yeah, and that's like a feeling you get sometimes in LA. It's like, oh, maybe they're here, you know? <laughs> <laughs> like, this is the end. Independence like the movie, Day? They're like, in is that you know, LA? No, yes. that was well, you yeah, know, New York in, or LA? LA? In Independence LA, Day, yeah. there's the th- rally where all the people go to meet the aliens and yeah, Our uh-huh. friend from the strip club is like holding a sign that's like, take me with you. Um, <laughs> yeah, that'd be me. Take that'd me be me. You. That's what I always think is like, <laughs> that'd be me. That'd be everybody in LA completely would be like, let's go meet them. They're celebrities. <laughs> um, <laughs> we'll wait for an autograph. They're going to have a meet and greet with the aliens, guys. Line up. You just have to line up next yeah, to the Yeah, maybe we'll get a good Grom TikTok theater. from the aliens. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, once there was like a SpaceX rocket – that they didn't really warn us very well about what's happening. And I was just fully mm-hmm. like, Oh, here it is. Here's the, al- here come <laughs> yeah. the aliens like, before I looked into it, you know, just where you're like, okay, something yeah, in the sky. Here. Yeah. It's not like, unusual for that to be your first thought. A friend of ours actually texted and was like, I, I don't know who else to tell this to, but I think I saw a UFO and I did go on Twitter and I just searched like SpaceX and I was like, don't worry, man. It was no, SpaceX it's like it, there was, but there's no warning. There's no warning. And you're like, I know that it's probably a rocket, but like, what about like older people who don't even yeah. know? Yeah. Like, and sometimes it's not mentally a rocket. Ill like people? the USS Nimitz. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That would be truly just like when you see something in the sky you've never seen before, it makes you feel strange. It makes you oh, feel yeah, weird. Yeah, yeah. Sure. So yeah, this like, is also like I was a- like, okay, what is going on at the observatory? There's like a bright blue light emanating from the sky uh, over the observatory. This is like never seen this before. And because of the fog, it's like the clouds are like holding the light kind of. Do you know Ooh. what I mean? It's like, yeah, mm-hmm. it's I imagine like, like a, yeah, those science experiments where there's like the light zaps up through the middle and the yes. fog is inside of the little glass around yes. it. Yes, it's like the fog looks like smoke and there's like this blue light projected all on it. And it's very strange mm-hmm. looking. And so my first thought was this is like the last time something like this happened where the observatory was closed because this is also the observatory was closed. So I looked mm, it up and it was oh like the observatory gosh. is closed for two days. And I was so like, there's not even like a party going on with like a strobe light inside. Well, I was it. like, what's going, you know, why did they close the observatory? Like they closed it for a few weeks a while ago to refurbish it. But like the last time it was closed, it was because they were filming an Adele special. And that oh. I found out because I was hiking that day and I heard her sound checking. Wow. And that was also they hiked towards nice. the sound. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, that was crazy too. It was like a private event. You can't get in, but you can in the park for free hear Adele sound checking. What a cool experience. Hear it That's like awesome. through the mountains. So that was my oh, first nice. thought. I was like, maybe this is some kind of a a concert special or something mm-hmm. that they're filming. Private. But yeah, I drove into the park and like as I got closer to it, it was very like spooky because it was also just like obscured by trees and it's like you can only see the observatory from certain parts, but you have to keep driving. There's nowhere to pull over. So I drove like pretty far into the park. It's also like dark, dark as hell. Um, and Griffith Park, which is like a big, large park. It's very, it's a great park. It's very spooky because it's like as soon as it starts to become dark, you're like, 
oh, we're in a forest, you know? You're like, yeah, yeah. all day. You're like, we're no longer in LA. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You're like, I'm in the city. And then when it starts, because I've also like stayed there too long and like waited too long to drive down, like went to see the sunset and then been like, oh, now I'm in the park and it's nighttime. And it gets, yeah, the sun has set. It gets, it <laughs> okay, becomes I have to drive back. frightening and, and like, and yeah, spooky in that fun way where you're like, Ooh, animals are like alive, you know, yeah. rustling, <laughs> rustling in the trees. Yeah. Like this is a place, this is a feral place. Like mm-hmm. humans <laughs> pretend they have taken over this land, but like the animals and, and there's like a bunch of, there's a really great pack of coyotes there who mm, are awesome. very kind of tame because they live in, this park that's kind of public but also because they live by a barbecue pit next to a music oh, venue nice. so they get that's so a much really good what a for great a life pet. for a coyote oh my if god I was a coyote that's where i'm picking to you go just get to listen to adele <laughs> and eat barbecue they have the best life they get so close to people because they are used to it but there's five of them yeah. and they're like a pack one of them's missing a leg mm. it's very oh. like one of my favorite things about that is like the one who's missing a leg like you'll see them walking around with it and they all wait for it oh sweet baby you know i was so like so they wow. don't and they're they don't attack any they don't there's never been like attacks or anything no because they get fed so well it's like they never yeah. attack humans they just eat don't like bite the hand that feeds you they just eat animals but they yeah they truly like they these ones are so like tourist friendly because they get mm-hmm. fed so well and they are around so close to humans um, mm-hmm. but it is crazy because they'll just like cross the street and stuff in a path, you know. <laughs> They're just like, wait, like, hold light. on, Greg. We gotta wait for we Greg. Gotta wait for Greg. And they do. <laughs> it's like they stop and they turn around and wait for Greg. And Aww. it makes me. I love it because I'm also like this goes against like, you know, it's like they're yeah, a pack. They all take care of each other. Yeah. Even the one that's yeah. like not, you know, the one that's it's, just, it's the one that's disabled. They're not literally. Out the herd, yeah, right. They're, they're not like kill or be killed. Like inclusive. you're weak, and we right, leave you right. behind. They're like you're weak, and we take care of you. I find that I love very that. lovely. Yes, I agree. Right, it's, it's almost like yeah. if all your needs are met, you can take time to like be kind to oh, the biggest of your. See, pack. you got to be giving every, all the coyotes and in, barbecue like, the and vicious world of the animal concerts. kingdom. Yeah, it's like that they yeah they, they stick together. It's nature, man. I we're all that. animals. All That's of us. true. Yeah. If we have our needs met, we're a lot it nicer. It is also like when you see them, you know, when you see an animal like that, a wild animal, and you see coyotes a lot in LA, and it's always amazing. I don't know if you guys mm-hmm. have them in Dallas. We do have them here, have but them here. Not the amazing. attitude towards them is not it's one different. of that you take. Yeah. Well, because yeah. they're not used to people. So when they yeah. get in neighborhoods, they will attack. People hate them oh, yeah. here because they eat dogs and stuff, but yeah, yeah you yeah. know. It is just like they're also dogs. They're wild dogs. And it's like when you see them, when you see them in the street, like at night, especially, it's like, and you make like eye contact with them and you're yeah. like, oh, we are communicating across yeah. the species like, line. Cool. Cool. <laughs> yeah. We're all cool. But also, you like lock up. I mean, it's yeah. that like connection. Yeah. No, I get it. <laughs> but then it was like, as I was driving into the park, there was like a guy kind of came out of nowhere into the street and he was holding a security vest. And kind of like waving it at me, but he didn't seem mm-hmm. like a security guy. He and wasn't wearing it. Like a rant. Yeah, it was really strange. And he started kind of like running towards my car. And I was like, okay, get him oh. out of here. I'm done. <gasps> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? Not worth it. <laughs> not worth it. If he's a real security guard and he's gonna yell at me. And if he's not a real mm-hmm. security guard, that's weird too, that he's got a security yeah, guard yeah. vest. Um yeah. what happened there's a to the story there guard? and we probably don't want to know. Yeah, find just out a little unsettling. So I was like, okay, yeah. I'm out. I probably shouldn't be out. in the park at, you know, 10 p.m. anyway. Um mm-hmm. because it's it's closed technically. Um so and I also didn't want to get pulled over or anything because I was smoking weed. Right. Um <laughs> <laughs> obviously. So I so then I, you know, I took a picture. And then, but, but I was truly just like, what was that? Like, what is going on? And when I got close to it, you could see, it just looked really fascist too. It was like, when I got Mm, uh close to it, you could see there were like these beams of blue light sort of being projected and like they were filtering through the fog in this really spooky way. It just weird. looked scary. It looked weird, yeah. you know, because it was like, it's like, it, it looked kind of like, 
like a, a cult type you, yeah, you stumbled like, upon like a or like a an weird, illuminati gathering like a or futuristic like a, art deco yeah. like spooky kind of like post-apocalyptic type of politics yeah like some kind of like future future congress you know yeah well, interplanetary yeah. congress <laughs> Um, it sounds like it's <laughs> creepy to have the old Art Deco building with something so futuristic, like a laser beam or like yeah, beams of light. Because yeah. you're just like, wait a minute. Like, I get it if it's yeah, yeah. like a, a state of the art university. Of course, they have lasers, or it's a club or a stadium. But if it's a night like an old Art Deco like observatory, maybe they do, and I just don't know enough about it. They've installed them subsequently, <laughs> but it does like it gives your brain like that. That's not supposed to be that. It was very strange. And because of the fog, it was like incredibly like there was this blue cloud of light over the observatory and you could see it from very far away still. Man. So then I, then I was kind of like, I got to get out of here. After I left her, the guy with the security vest thing, I was like, okay, I don't need to like, I don't want something bad to happen. I was only a little right. spooky. Yeah, spooky. I would bounce. <laughs> Time to go. So... So yeah, then I was just like driving through Los Feliz, which is like completely dead an hour after I've had dinner. There's like nothing, you know, nobody out and nothing happening. Um, and then I went home and I was like, that was weird. What was that all about? <laughs> yeah. um, what was that? Yeah. Didn't seem like it was an Adele concert. <laughs> no, you didn't hear anything. No, that was the thing too. There was no sound. It's like, um, and, and and also usually there's like a theater venue down at the bottom called the Greek Theater. So it's like that's usually where okay. concerts and stuff happen. You know. So I was just like, okay, well, that's probably like not a concert at the like. What are they doing at the observatory? Because it's like a city building, right? So then I was like, okay, time to look on Instagram and search the location tag. And see if anybody was there. Oh, that's Were smart. you the only one drawn to it? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, was, it said like everywhere down there, you know, it, it said the observatory is closed, but there's no information on the site about what it was closed for. It was just like, we are closed for two days. Um, hmm. And, you know, and last time it did that, it was like, cause for repairs. And this time it was just like closed for two days. Um, mm hmm. And for the Adele concert, too, it was kind of like closed for the night, no explanation, which is also like sucks yeah. for people that are tourists Wanna who go. came here just to go. Like mm -hmm. there were definitely some people in the park who looked like we came to go to the observatory and we're being told we're not allowed to, you know. Oh, man. Yeah. Stop by the car. Yeah. So uh, I looked up the tag on Instagram and lo and behold, I found out what it was. <gasps> what was it? It was... A FIFA event. Oh man! To <laughs> unveil the logo for the 2026 World Cup. Oh, and I mean, exciting. No, it's like, also. it sucks. And <laughs> well, it is like FIFA is an incredibly corrupt body. So oh, it yeah, is, no, that's a whole. That could be. A I whole was podcast like, series. oh, I, it was sinister. It was like, uh, it was, <laughs> um, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> and also it's like I'm part of this like anti-Olympics group because the Olympics are supposed to come to L.A. in 2028. So it was also like oh, I wow, accidentally I uncovered something that I would have looked for anyway. Yeah. Right. Uh, that's that's crazy that you were drawn to it, though. I was You're drawn like, to it. This? And then it was like, oh, these are all the same people that are trying to bring the Olympics to L.A. And it's just a bunch of like, you know, corporate, like horrible, the worst rich people in the city trying to like do this grift that – you know, wow. promising poor people they'll get to see the Olympics, but they won't. You know, same thing with mm -hmm. the World Cup, too. It's like it'll all go to yeah. oligarchs, but yeah. they're like, don't you want the World Cup to come here and make a bunch of money yeah. for corporations yeah. and fuck up the whole city for weeks? Yeah. That, um, man, that John Oliver special on the building of the stadiums for the World Cup was gut-wrenching yeah. and eye-opening. Just the amount of exploitation that went yeah. into building that. It was totally just like a thing that would happen to me where I was like, oh, I wasn't looking... <laughs> Right. I wasn't looking for that, but that's something I would do anyway. You know, right? your brain. I, I have been to. I like. I have snuck into weird corporate Olympics boosterism events because really because of trying. You know, to, for Intel or whatever. So it's like yeah. completely something I would have paid attention to and it's like all the same people the universe as the is LA, telling you yeah. as the la olympics it's all this it was literally the same graphic designer team the same bad terrible design team so that's why it was like 
weird Blue alien fascist spaceship. alien yeah yeah like the projections i looked so then i looked at like geotagged photos of like the presentation which was all like laser club lights on the on the mm. dome um wow. and it was broadcast on telemundo and okay cristiano ronaldo was there <laughs> No, look at that. It all came That forward. was the there first picture that came up was Ronaldo at the Griffith Observatory <laughs> tonight. Um, I don't think I know what this statue I'm looks like that you. you're talking I'll about. for you. Okay, Heather's going to pull it up. That'll be a, a good... Uh, full circle he was the first thing you mentioned oh, yeah, yeah it was oh, it was oh. so <laughs> hang on i'm gonna put it next to his face That's oh wait okay so you he's very attractive Molly, right? yeah oh. <laughs> that sculpture is he doesn't look sick. like the sculpture anymore somebody close. did him dirty no he's very attractive well, he looks in, nothing he, like that he just never looks maybe like he's starting maybe he's becoming um, the sculpture Oh, oh my fuck. god! Whatever made like, that sculpture, dude, or is it a sculpture? Maybe it's just his future skin. I was gonna say it's like a Stephen King book or something, where it's like, I'll make a sculpture of you, and you're like, okay, and you don't know that you will like <laughs> descend into yes. that. I'm like, why is my face doing Melt this? Into Honestly, the sculpture can you think of want. anything scarier than being confronted with a sculpture of yourself? God. Oh, no. A wax figure of myself? Oh no, my I god, cannot. no. That is horrifying. You just like reach out and touch it, and what Ooh. if it reaches back? It would. It, well, it's walking towards you, so oh, I think no. it would reach out and touch you. That's what I was envisioning. Oh, I like oh my to believe god. That, yeah. Cristiano <laughs> Ronaldo's soul is trapped in that sculpture. <laughs> Pretty satisfying conclusion to find out. Yeah. Yeah. That's find wild. out what yeah. it was. But there was fully, fully a five to 10 minute period where I was like, Oh, it's oh, aliens. It. Yep. Here, here they, they are. Here they are. They're landing at the observatory. Me. That makes sense to me. <laughs> it no. would, yeah. And the tourists are going to get way more They're than like, they bargained for. Her. And the blue light kind of was like an Independence Day when the aliens come and, and mm -hmm. right? they kill everybody. Mm -hmm. That's the thing is like mm -hmm. the, the dumb LA people are like, oh, we're going to go in the UFO. And then they like blast them. And it's like, they get zapped immediately. Stupid assholes. That's but <laughs> when you. <laughs> When you see that blue light come up, it's like, is it coming from above or going? That's you know, what is it was like. You also going up. You, or, you couldn't. Yeah. That was the thing about the blue light and the fog was like you couldn't tell if it was coming up or being beamed down. You know, it truly That's was creepy. like. Is mm, it? It looked like maybe a, both. It looked like a cloud of light over it. It was mm -mm. very strange. Um, it was all Cristiano Ronaldo, and it was all Ronaldo. <laughs> it was all about yeah. about it was FIFA twenty six. That's what it turned out all to right. be. Yeah. Well, that's Which the true, actually like you said, the true sinister thing is yeah. truly sinister. <laughs> that was the thing. It was it yeah. was very like oh, okay, you know what's actually way more insidious than if it were aliens is uh, right. Yeah. Mega sports grifting. Uh, mankind, yes. I right. say that all the time. The scariest monster of all and the same is type of, humans. The same type of <laughs> thing. Like, this is, it was very much like this is an event for like sports elites and rich people and yeah. media. Oh, yeah. And no regular people can get anywhere close to it, even mm -hmm. though we're. I'm going to wave my vest at you. Still to get weird out. that he wasn't wearing the vest and he's just swinging it around. That was very strange. That was also why on. I was like, and it was like, he was trying to like talk to me and I was like, Nope, gotta go. Okay. <laughs> no. If anybody outside of my car is waving their arms, trying to talk to me most of the time, I'm like, no, thank you. No, I'll leave well, if he had thank had the so security much. vest on, I probably yes. would have been like, he's a security guy, but because he was like holding it, I was like, what is going on here? I got you. You just ripped that off a real security. Yeah, did you, card? Did you <laughs> kill a security? And take or his are you like and now you're a crazy person but you bring a security vest in like the whole thing, yeah, you know yeah. what it probably you was I think about it afterward I was like what was that it's probably that they did just hire like rando volunteers for this event mm -hmm. because it wasn't a Greek theater event and it wasn't mm -hmm. like an official park event or official. anything so they probably did just hire like day workers for the day to like yeah. be the Here's security your I don't know, just hold it <laughs> which is also crazy when they do that when they're just like the security team is a bunch of teenagers <laughs> like yeah you're like cool so, so i just team. park here and they're like yeah. i guess so. I know. And they're also the swim team from the local high school but they're an elite team 
right now they're in charge of security. So, and they can help you if you uh, drown, uh, if you fall in the water. So that is wild. Well, what a wild night, man. Yeah. You you're out for just a quick drive and hang out with friends and you end up uncovering not just a possible alien uh, UFO <laughs> laser, but also the true sinisterness of human corruption, which was apparently <laughs> going on back there. Very that is a freaky Friday the story. Thing heard of all. One. Yes. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining us. Where can people find you if they want to listen and follow you and all that fun stuff? Well, you can find me on Instagram at Molly underscore Lambert. And uh, I have a Twitter account, but I'm kind of off Twitter now at Molly Lambert. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I, I do a weekly show called Deck Heads about Below Deck, the Bravo show about people who oh, work yeah. on charter yachts. Um, and that's at twitch.com slash Deckheads Pod. You can watch it anytime, Excellent. but we broadcast on Tuesday nights. And yeah, and more stuff coming soon. More, more narrative pods. Yeah, uh, long form and Heidi World can be found wherever mm -hmm. you listen to podcasts. Yeah, wherever wherever you you get your pods. Awesome, that's perfect. Well, we love it. We can't wait to hear your teased new project about yes. having a Las Vegas touch because we uh, we loved Heidi World and we're gonna check out your uh, deckheads because we started dipping our toes. The I started dipping my toes. Oh, mob. is that what it's going to be all about? Well, Vegas, they're mob. just related, related. I'm just trying to bring okay. it back to the JFK assassination. <laughs> oh, it's all in the universe. Oh, yeah. it's all connected. Like, it yeah. is truly corrupt it's underworld. The American uh, pop culture universe. Yeah, it's true. The American yeah. way. We'll be ready for it. We can't wait. <laughs> Honestly, it's our favorite kind of stuff to dig into. Aliens, yeah. assassinations. <laughs> If you can work it in, we're, we're here for it. What Sex more for could sale. you ask? <laughs> That's America That's right the there. cherry on top. Just print that on the bottom of the flag. But yeah, well, we appreciate you hanging out with us today. Yeah, thank, thank you. you so much. Yeah, thanks so much. It was great talking to you guys. You too.